Hey guys, it's Bear. It's Friday, February 5th, and I finally got around to doing my Transthetics EZP review. I've been talking about doing this for probably like two months now, and I'm really sorry that it took me this long to get to this video. But, yeah, uh, this is the second time I've talked about an STP. I think the first video is actually only on the Life of T-Men channel, but I'm going to go ahead and link it over to this channel because... I wanted to also talk about the, the EZP. This STP, stand to P device, is a game changer. I highly recommend this uh, to any trans guy who's looking to find an affordable, comfortable, reliable stand to P device. I talk about it online all the time. Anytime somebody asks about these things, I recommend this guy. There is a little bit of a wait to get it, but it's worth the wait. It's like $200 and then some shipping. Worth the $200. I've seen people complain that $200 is too pricey for a stand to P device, but I'm telling you, having tried a couple of them, and I'll talk about that, this one is worth the money and it's worth the wait. You get it through transthetics.com, and there's also a YouTube channel just called Transthetics that you can see reviews and you can see, uh, see it in use and you can also see some uh, tips and tricks for wearing it and using it. I'm going to do two parts to this video. One part's going to be the review and then the second part's going to be some tips and tricks uh, in case you've got one and you can't quite figure it out or if you're not sure if you want to buy one or not. Again, I 100% uh, endorse this product. So, things I like about it, it's really soft, it's really comfortable and it's small and discreet. So, you can see the device, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show it in close up. You can see that it's it's fairly small. All right. It is about 6 inches in total length and the phallus is only about half of that. Again, uh, a lot of STP devices the phallus is actually much much larger than that and I feel like that's not necessary for a flaccid penis in your pants. They tend to be a little bit uncomfortable and bulky and make it look like you've got an erection. So this one's much smaller, very discreet, very soft, and very comfortable. It's not a very sticky silicone and I've never had to use any kind of cornstarch on it uh, for tackiness. And also the detail is really, really nice. You can see it from all the different angles here. Alright, the cup size is really adequate. Uh, a lot of devices have a much smaller cup size and it's recommended right up in the directions that you control your flow as you urinate uh, in order to not overflow the device. And that can be, you know, just not satisfying. This one's got a really nice large cup. Again, it's soft. And it has a lip around the edge here so that when you're wearing it at rest, which I'll show you, um, if there is any drops left inside, uh, they tend to not spill over that little edge. So the cup's really nice and, and big when it's sitting under you. There's a lot of space and there's a lot of space for it to fill before it overflows. I've never overflowed this device down the shaft you can see that there's a lot of room again so that you don't get backflow and you can see that the hole is is pretty adequate so all in all as far as the actual volume of the device and the size of the device it's very small but also larger on the inside than a lot of devices have been um, so it's small it's soft and comfortable um, but you don't have to really hold back your flow when you're using it as long as you've got it at the right angle. You have to rely on gravity, you have to tilt it down and that'll be in part two of the video. I've only had this fail on me maybe four or five times and the times that I've had it fail it's because it's been tilted a little bit or um, my underwear will get kind of pushed over the edge and will get wet. Um, it's only ever failed when I'm practicing at home. I've never had it fail on me when I was out using it. 
and when I'm practicing at home, the thing I'm practicing now is trying to get it into position to use quicker so I can use it in public at urinals without like sort of shifting something around in my pants and calling myself out. So I really blame more myself and my technique than the actual device. There's no harness for this device is the other thing I like about it. Um, in previous videos and with previous devices I've talked about harnesses and stuff. Harnesses are annoying because you have to take them on and off and when I'm trying to go to the gym and I want to slip this off discreetly um, because I don't always work out with it on I don't want to have to take my pants all the way down, take the harness off, pull my pants, whatever, you know, it's just too much. With this one, I've got a way to keep it in my underwear, that'll be in part two, and I can just go into the gym, use it, wipe it out, take it off, and throw it in the cargo pocket of my pants. Um, so not having a harness is really, really super helpful, and again, in part two, I'll show you how to do that with your, with just your underwear. So. Like I said, um, I don't always wear this with, when I'm working out. I have worn it while working out and I was comfortable. Um, I've done cardio and weight workouts like kettlebells with this on. There's a lot of movement in that and the device is held pretty firmly in place and it's not like rubbing on your skin or your junk in weird ways. I've also worn it while kickboxing and doing like martial arts uh, and I've done it I've worn it while doing jiu-jitsu as well. Again, it's never fallen out of my underwear. It's never shifted into a weird place that wasn't uh, harder to adjust than kind of doing a little shimmy, which guys do all the time. The only reason I don't wear it while working out all the time is that it's just one thing to think about or to uh, feel and be distracted by. So I often take it off, but I don't feel like I have to. And I know that for other activities, you know, I'll uh, I'll wear it during work where I'm w moving around a lot, you know, um, and it was designed by a cyclist and a climber who wanted to be active and he uses it. Um, I've heard other people talk about uh, wearing it while they're running and, and so forth. It's very, very, very comfortable because it's soft and you're wearing it in a rested position that's not really rubbing on, you know, your genitals. If anything, every once in a while it will shift to an awkward position and it's just a matter of shimmying it into a better position. So that's why I like it. There's really no reason that I don't like it. There's not anything negative to say about it in this review. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give you part two where I talk about how to use it and so forth. So look for that.